So, first of all, very thank you for such a warm welcome here. So, as you see here, the topic for today's discussion, in fact, is agility by non-agile teams. So, to be very honest, uh, I reached here in the morning and the purpose was to understand, to see the kind of audience and the, the kind of topics that, that is going to happen here. And now I, I thought like we'll talk about this topic a bit later. So I just wanted to talk about some trends uh, and then we'll try to connect these trends and then see whether these trends is making sense to us or not. So to understand the first trend, so I want everybody to please stand up. On, it's not like we are doing some kind of a national anthem, but yes, we'll try to understand one trend from this exercise. All right. So I assume the people standing in this room is reflecting the percentage of population who is currently studying in India. I hope you got it. So the people standing the over here, they are part of the education system and they are studying in the primary, in the secondary or senior secondary or they are doing graduation and post-graduation. So the very first trend that I wanted you people to tell us, in India, so this is the population of students who are studying, 40% of the people will leave their education in the primary and the secondary, secondary education. So I would say, this whole bunch of people, they can sit down, reflecting, these are the people, these are the percentage of people or students who left their schooling after primary education and the secondary education. Now the second bunch of people, which is doing their secondary education, graduation and post-graduation. So let's talk about that. So it is, again, a big irony here, like more, more than 50% of the population is again leaving their senior secondary education as well. So I would say, keeping this just first row standing, we can say rest of people, you can sit down, citing more than 50% of the population, they are leaving their education post-secondary or after their class two. So what I am trying to reflect here is, it's just 8% of the population who is doing graduation. So ladies and gentlemen, please sit down. So this is the first trend that I wanted to highlight to all of you. You people are doing graduation. So first of all, I congratulate you all because you are among that 8% of the population who is going to complete their graduation. So first of all, a big round of applause for you people so that you feel empowered, you feel that energy that you are such privileged people who are a part of that 8% of the population. And believe me, it's just 1 or 2% of the population who go for their post-graduation. So this is the first trend that I really wanted to highlight. Now, let's, let's talk about the second trend and then we'll try to connect these trends and see whether the... Uh, I, I heard a lot of speakers talk about India super in 2050 and let's try to understand and try to connect these trends so that we'll see that whether this thing makes some sense to it or not. Yeah, so the second trend that I would like to talk about is the demographic dividend. How many of you know about demographic dividend? Very few people. Right? It's a very interesting phenomena. When we say demographic dividend, it means that we have the youngest population, youngest working population, and by 2050, it's a government stats which says by 2050, we have like more than 50% of the population is below 25 years of age. And we are very proud of it because we have the youngest population. And honestly, government does not contribute anything towards this interesting feature. It is after independence that we were so happy that instead of producing coal and energy and other sector, we started producing people. And this is how we got this trend. Right? So we are very proud like we are the youngest population and we are going to be a superpower in 2050. But interestingly, so this is the second trend that I wanted to talk about. So as I said, 8% of the population is doing graduation and then we are saying 50% of the population is 25 years of age. Do you see any kind of a link between these two? 
All right. So what I, the point that I wanted to highlight here is, it is very, very important to, in today's scenario when we are saying we have the youngest population and we say the kind of education system that we have, it doesn't correlate at all. So the need of the hour is, then we talk about skills. I see the brilliant people out here who talks about skills. So the point here is, the kind of connection that I wanted to make is, it is very, very important if we want India to be a superpower, it is very, very important to be to have skills. Uh, at the same time, we do want support from the industry and the government itself so that we can focus more towards skills and then empower people in various sectors. So that is why for the first time in the history of Indian administration, you see the Ministry of Skill Development, which never happened before. Why they are focusing? Because it is very important for us we, because we proclaim ourselves that we are going to be a superpower in 2050. But the kind of demographic, the kind of stats we have, it is showing a downward trend. It is not me who is saying it is a challenge, but it is the government of India who itself, you know, say in their government records, if you read the economic survey of 2013 and 14, you will read this demographic dividend can be a big challenge. And that is where the more focus is on towards skills. So the idea that I'm talking about here is how skill is going to be very, very important in the coming future and how industry and the government, they need to support these skills and empower youth. Because the kind of placements that, that we have, the kind of job opportunities we have, it's very scarce. So it is very, very important to understand this trend and make yourself empower and make yourself you have you should have skills so that you can map to the different industry so that's kind of a trend that i really wanted to talk about so coming back to the topic now agility by non agile teams so I, i'll just try to introduce this topic uh, when i say agile agile is a very popular management framework and it is applied by many organizations, if you talk about any uh, fashion industry, including Zara, or you have like big Fortune 500 companies, so they are using this philosophy, agile philosophy, in managing their projects. And when we talk about the non-agile teams, I am coming back to these people, these teams, who do not have any kind of formal education, who never heard about agile philosophy, who never heard about agile project management, but still, the kind of that the work they people are doing is as good as by a, a, a student or, or a professional who did their certification from Oxford or Harvard. So what point that I'm trying to make over here is, it's, it's not the formal education, the certification that we carry. But yes, there are trends in the market. There are, you know, you, you all are aware of the startup culture in Chandigarh. You are all aware of the how the people in plus two, in, they, after their graduation, they start their own ventures and they are doing brilliant, brilliant work. So I'm not talking about these. So the non-agile team says these people who do not have any kind of formal education. So when I say agility by non-agile teams, I'm saying teams who do not have any kind of formal education, but they are working as good as the graduate from Oxford and Harvard. So keeping this thing in mind, I have few case studies I, I share. Can I? Yep. So this is the first. I'm sure that you people all are aware of Mumbai Dabbewalas. What point that I wanted to highlight here is, if you go on their website and you see mumbaidabbewalas.in, what is written here is, we are humble people. We do not know the management theories. We get surprised when big companies approach us for workshop and seminars. Just, just a kind of message that they want to portray. That they are humble people, they do not have any kind of a management background. But still, they are doing so well that Oxford, Harvard and what not. They are approaching them and asking them for their case studies. That how good you are. You are Six Sigma. You are delivering the bus with such an efficiency that we cannot deliver project in that way. So that's a kind of trend that I wanted to tell you people. This is a Mithaiwala shop in Pune. It's called Chitle Bandhu. Anybody heard about it? No. 
Yeah, there, there are some people who heard about it, probably if they are from Maharashtra. No. All right. So this is again a very, very interesting trend. If you see it's a Mithai Wala, and if you see over here in this slide in the bottom, in 1995, they people introduced RFID in their billing system. When we say RFID, if you go to Elante Mall and all malls, you get a smart card, you purchase things, the people will bill you. So this is the kind of system that they people introduced way back in 1995. Right? It's not something which is new. They understand, they see that they, there is a lot of demand for their products. They see that there is a very, very big problem in con because there is a huge demand. There are a lot of people came to their Mithaiwala shop and you know demand for this. There is a lot of problem in the billing system. So they thought like let's introduce this system and try to you know make the system more efficient. So this is the kind of trend that I'm saying. That skills are very, very important in today's scenario when we're talking about the superpower. It's not the formal education who is going to support us, but yes, it's a skill who can make us a superpower in a time to come. So again, this is one again one example of uh, a team where skills or the kind of the problem solving skills actually help them in increase their revenue by 5 billion today. So that's a kind of case study that I wanted to bring in front of you. Again, one trend. Now, this is uh, again an experiment uh, that we did uh, being a part of Agile community. So we started a group called Agile Chandigarh in January 2015. It's a part of a global initiative of Scrum Alliance, which is a US-based organization. So we started a, a group called Agile Chandigarh in January 2015 and once we got the approval from Scrum Alliance, we thought of let's, let's do one event in Chandigarh and let, let's try, you know, people tell about what is the benefit of Agile, what is, how it is going to be beneficial in, in terms of uh, a small and medium industry, in terms of ID people. So we thought of doing a very small event in Chandigarh and ironically it happens to be at the best school here that is at ISB Mahali in April 2015. And what kind of trend, again, I wanted to highlight here is the kind of participation that we got. We got like 120 plus people, not only from India, but from US, Germany, there's a part of participation from these countries as well. We got close to 20 plus speakers from different industry, including you know the top directors of Make My Trip, you know Pitney Bowes and whatnot. And why I am highlighting this case study here? Because the kind of team who is there to conduct this particular event, they people are college graduate who have not exposed to any of the agile methodologies before. So you understand a team which has no understanding of agile team which has no understanding of the Agile framework, how difficult for them it is to convince people and to attend the seminar. But still they people achieve it. And that is why the cutting that you see here is the cutting from the economic times. So if you see the heading, it's management mantra. So ironically, again, the kind of trend that I wanted to highlight here is the graduates, the college graduates, undergraduates who have not completed their graduation also, they people conducted a seminar to which they have no prior knowledge, but yes, based on their skills, based on their energy, based on their enthusiasm, they people create such a major event that they become the youngest team globally, with a range, age range of 18 to 21 year of age. So the kind of trend that I wanted to highlight here is, if you see the heading, it's the management mantra and understand in economic times with the heading called management mantra and the team that you see is all undergraduates. So that kind of a confidence gift to all the people that skills are very very important and this is, the, the, this is only the skills which is taking us to become a great superpower in 2015. So my takeaway from this session is that it is very important to enhance your skills. Don't think about the education. I'm not saying don't think about formal education and leave your college. But yes, skills are very, very important if you really want to excel. And at the same time, the industry needs to support us. So the idea that I'm floating here is that industry do need to appreciate skills now. 
So that's the kind of idea that I wanted to, you know, portray to all of you with this platform. So that's all from my side. Thank you so much.